Order of the Odd Fellows. Fraternal group just like the Masons here in Austin. We're gonna walk around the Order of Odd Fellows first. You can see there's cemeteries on both sides of the road. This is a much finer cemetery. There's the Angel, of course. You have to expect the Masons to have a nicer cemetery. There's also an Indian cemetery. We'll go through each one first with pictures for my website. Definitely, this is still used. A lot of fresh graves, too, or newer ones. But we'll go through each of the cemeteries. And I'll start off my video very simple. And I'll tell you a little bit about the Indian cemeteries. It's at the base of Austin Summit. The cemeteries are located. Despite that it's at the base, keep in mind we are at an elevation of about 6,000, maybe 6,500 feet. The Austin Cemetery is composed of five cemeteries. You have the Calvary, Order Odd Fellows, Sonic Citizens, and the Ascension. And then, of course, the Citizen Cemetery. Of course, other people name them different things. When you really start to walk around, you start to realize that this place is truly fascinating. Here is your older section. And this is your newer section towards the back. The Order of Oddfellows is still around. There are some fraternal members, much like the Masons. These are very, very historical or old fraternal organizations. Talented, too. I mean, these... The Masons were builders, the Order of Odd Fellows, they all had skilled trades, a lot of them that belonged there within that group. This type of wrought iron was not cheap back in the day. These people had money. A lot of great photos to take here. The historic sections in the very middle, and the new sections are on the end. Look at that old sign. That might be a separate cemetery there, right? Yeah, that's the second cemetery. See the sign? We'll get we'll get to it in a second. I'm gonna get some pictures. Of all that. Also, that epitaph on Grave Li Qi, Chinese born, born in 1824, died in 1931 at the age of 107. It reads here: "Lies a good fellow Chinaman who had a heart of gold for many a hungry man he fed before his body became." Many cemeteries, a lot of artistic monuments. I have a deeper history we'll get into later. But we gotta get some photos first. This is the thing. These places that are historic like this definitely need some black and white photos and some historic attention. Even restoration. See garbage picking up. Very sorry, the the one thing that kind of bothers me a little is the wind today. I'm very sorry for that. But the winds come whipping through. This is the middle of Nevada. And of course with Austin Summit in the background, a Stokes Castle. This is a really great place just to walk and explore. Wow. I need to take a look at this. Some of these cemeteries really show a lot of cultural. A lot of cultural diversity. According to my paperwork and directions, this little section you see here is the Masonic graves. I'm going to show you what I mean. See the Masonic symbol? Look very carefully. It does not seem as old. You'd expect it to be older. I thought that was a Masonic, but that's the Catholic and the Citizen Cemetery, and then the Indian one is all the way where the 
trees are over there. I would say you have you have a lot of basins buried here. We're at about 6,200 feet, but not a, not as many masons as I had thought. It's the masons that built the town. But my question is, is why aren't there more graves? I mean, these are fairly old, but most of these, like the wrought iron ones, are from the 1800s. This is Masonic. I believe when you get to about the halfway point, then you get into the Order of Oddfellows. Yeah, this is all Mason. When I walked in, everything about halfway where the tree is, where my Jeep is parked, one side's Masonic, the other side is the Oddfellows, is the IOOF, and these are all historic Masonic graves. So there are no older graves here. But you have to seek them out. You really have to explore the cemetery. We have some beautiful monuments. The Masons and the Order Oddfellows, like I said, they took a lot of pride in their gravestones. Now, I can't say that here's King. I can't say that some of these are, I mean, these are all Masons. This one is... That's definitely a mason grave. You can see the symbol on top. Look at the craftsmanship. 1898. So the masons were very influential in the Austin area. And yes, there were outbreaks, epidemics. So you will probably see some children's stones here. Here are some of the fellows, graves. Here to start at the halfway point in the cemetery. So what I'll do is I'll take a bunch of photos. This half is IOOF, the other half's basins. But I gotta get pictures, man, because this place is unreal. There are some nice stones. There are some vandalized and warp stones too from the harsh weather out here. Yep. It's about the halfway point. Seems like there's more, about equal, on historic graves on both sides. We'll get more into the history when we go to the Calvary. I believe that's a Catholic one. It's overshadowed by Stokes Tower. There's an angel, which I would definitely want to get a photographs and video of the angel obviously because it's a fine piece of historic craftsmanship it's a masterpiece and we need to be able to we need to be able to visit these places and let people enjoy them through our site for years to come you can see the mason symbol but it is just buried under brush Wow. I'll get some more footage of the IOOF as soon as I'm done working here in the Masonic area. Much more to enjoy. We're in the Order of Oddfellows, IOOF. You can kind of see, there's something strange I noticed, or I was aware of. You have a Masonic grave in the wrong section of the cemetery. There are symbols for the IOOF on some of the tombstones in this area. And then all of a sudden you have St. John's surrounded by other IOOF members. Two separate fraternal groups. I don't know, maybe he wanted to be close to his wife or who knows. You can see the difference it seems like to me, I really hate to say it, but I think the IOF is in much more terrible shape than the Masonic graves. There is a lot of rod iron here. It's in pretty poor shape, parts of the cemetery. Your birthday? 
Oh, yeah, that's creepy. That is. There's a lot of people that died in May. I'm trying to figure it out. There's a November one. <laughs> yeah, it is. So the IOF seems to have quite a few debilitating stones. Although, you know, there are some Masonic graves that are broke or chipped or fallen over. And you come over here. I believe the chain links are the symbol for the IOF, so that's how you know for sure these were fraternal members. Benaya Littlefield. The culture was very diverse in Austin. And there are some horror stories. I mean, there were people hung. There was wild western justice. It really is an amazing place. And you should take time. There's two cemeteries we've been to. We have three more, and then we have a mill or the ghost town remnants of Clifton. You should take the time to explore. You should never rush these type of things. There's a lot of people who come to these locations and really don't ever bother to pay a visit to the cemetery. They go straight to town and fall into the jewelers' traps, which I understand. It. I understand it helps boost the town's economy, and I have no problem sending people here to buy things. If you're going to come to Austin, you have got to visit the cemeteries. The other one is out of this world. There's three cemeteries across the street. Bam, bam, bam. And about 50 miles south of is Ione. We almost went to Ione one time. We didn't. And if you can't hear me, the wind's really strong today. So I can imagine there'll be parts of my video where you just don't hear me talking about the history. And I'm sorry. It is what it is. I'm doing the best I can. It's not like I can stay out here all week. We have a short time period, a couple days to be able to do the whole town and ghost town and multiple sites. I want to go see this geyser. I also want to go to some springs and some petroglyphs. I have a lot on my agenda. And you have Samuel J. Crescenzo. And it was a son, 1896 to 1907. Native of Austin, did not live long. A lot of children, like I said, died. In 1907, this child probably died. It, it starts with the D, some kind of epidemic that struck. I don't know how to pronounce it. It hit all the children in Austin, but at least a third of them. At least I've read on some sites they've gone here. Folks, if you're going to come here, you definitely want to check the Masonic and IOF. These are great cemeteries across the street. They, it even gets better. I wanted to start off with ones on the north side and then work my way over to the south side, which has some really beautifully, beautiful inscriptions, tombstones, epitaphs, and you'll also get to see the tower, which Stokes Castle, a lot of people visit. But I got to go inside. I got to meet the owner. I am one very happy guy today. So we're gonna go across the street to the cemeteries. We'll start off with the Catholic one, to the citizens one, to the Native American one. We'll just work our way through each area, section by section. This is Lord Rick, your founder of the Paranormal Ghost Society. Beautiful cemeteries, beautiful views, and the views even get more gorgeous on the other side. Calvary Cemetery. I think each cemetery is separated by a divider. We'll take it cemetery to cemetery. It's about all we can do. You have to understand there's 125 metal fences between the cemeteries or enclosures and about 20 wood fences around family plots. A lot of the wood ones are gone. A lot of the enclosures are found here. The wrought iron ones, that is. This is a really fantastic cemetery. This is the real deal. Citizen Cemetery is next in the Indian one. There's a beautiful angel. tell you a little more about the cemeteries before I get too deep into taking pictures and video. 
A lot of the burials date back to when the cemeteries were erected, starting in 1863. You got to look at when the town grew in the 18, later 1860s, 1870s. They started making improvements, putting in more wrought iron. Catholic cemeteries are very rich in a lot of ways. The epitaphs run very deep, all the way from prayers to multiple, all the way from prayers to pictures of the intermits. Catholicism was a very large theological practitioners in the Austin area. They made up most of the religion. The church was also a very big parish as well. You're going to see a lot of or ornamental or ornate fencing here. You have this beautiful angel. Like I said, this is a work of art. It's very well preserved. And just in, if you look straight ahead, this large valley is the Reese River Valley. The Reese River alone, 180 miles perhaps through Nevada. There's the tower, guys. Oh, yeah. That wind's just ripping through here. But I want people to understand the value in this cemetery. No running in the cemetery, guys. I want to take it section by section. Bear with me. This has got the most wrought iron fencing out of all the cemeteries combined in Austin. A lot of enclosures, a lot of fancy, well-to-do miners. Mine owners, I should say, pardon me. And this is the kind of thing you're gonna see. These graves are beautiful. Beautiful, our baby. These were well-to-do families. Marble, they, these, this ornate work, for example, like this. Back in those days, you had to be wealthy to afford these enclosures. But families were able to afford them because people did well in mining. If you, if you were a miner, not so much. Keep in mind, if you owned a mine, like Mark Twain said, you could sit back, make the money, and not really have to do anything but hire people and pay out the miners. And they worked for very little wages. They needed jobs. That's what led to these booms. It's a beautiful cemetery. Beautiful. Here we have more sections of the Catholic cemetery. I don't know where it ends and where it begins, but there's a lot of crosses. I mean, for example, look at this. Hey, think about the time that was put in this. They don't make graves like this anymore. What? Oh, uh, but you could see a lot of the wood enclosures are gone, non-existent. For example, these are collapsing. Winds are whipping, so it's pretty brutal. And you have these wooden grave markers. There's a tree growing in the middle of the enclosure, and this one's actually intact. And you can actually read a little bit of the inscriptions on them. This is a nice cemetery. I'll be right there. You see a lot of shells and minerals. These people were miners. I mean, you struck gold or silver was very much a commodity back then. You would be pretty well off, especially if you owned a mine that brought in, in one year, a million dollars or a hundred million dollars in a decade. These people were very wealthy. They were well-to-do and they were able to afford to have these very beautiful grave sites. We will be heading to the Citizen Cemetery. I want to make movies and put them all together so you guys can watch. Kind of like a documentary. We're never going to be able to cover the entire cemetery. The gist of it has been covered. You can see 
way off in the distance, you have, look at that, the ghost town of Clifton. You see the mill, the Clifton Mill, and the wall, all the way up to Austin itself. I've been to a lot of Catholic cemeteries. I have to say that they all differ in multiple ways. If you're going to visit them in the Wild West, you want to get the whole effect. And walk through the cemetery, spend a couple hours here. Enjoy the peace and serenity. Even the breeze feels good. I have no complaints. This is the real deal. Some snow on some of the peaks. The graves are different, and they're not as wealthy or well-to-do as some of the monuments there. What we want to do is get some video until we get to the Indian Cemetery and pictures, and then finish off the Indian Cemetery and then go up to Clifton to finish off our investigation for the day. I'm going to do probably, I'll walk downtown myself, do a little the good and bad of Austin. I'll talk about some of the outlaws and some of the achievements by some people who braved the Wild West. So we'll discuss outlaws. We'll discuss some horror stories. I don't really have any good ghost stories, but I hear that most of the places around here are haunted. And I suppose I could ask the lady at the hotel. I'm sure she'll tell me. These ghost stories circulate for years, even all the way from a century ago. You can tell there's much more. These are probably the miners, and these are probably the mine owners. Sad to say, but it's true. We have a lot of dust devils today, too. The wind is just whipping up sand. But you know what? It's a great area just to check out. You guys still looking down at us. See, this is a well-to-do person. The ornate, you could tell by the grave. Each church had their own funerals and intermits. And the fraternal groups had their own section as well. This is nice. There definitely is some broken stones. Here's a New York... A New York intermit. A noble woman, a kind, loving mother. To thy cross. So I'm having trouble reading. You're not going to be able to read every stone. Most of them are legible, though. You have to understand that there was a lot of segregation back in the wild west. People. Kind of, as sad as it sounds, they stuck to their own ethnic background, Wild West, and cultures. Even if they were buried side by side, you know, this is five different cemeteries here. For example, you have nothing in this wall iron fence, nothing at all. This is a giant tombstone, 27 years old. People did not live very long in Austin. So the Citizen Cemetery, a little more spread out. You have some enclosures. The monuments are a little bit smaller, half the size or a third of the size. Because back then, miners, these miners that were buried, a lot of them, they didn't have a lot of money. Mines often did not pay enough to the miners. Honestly, you had upper, lower, and middle class, just like in any society. And it's been that way in the 1800s in the Wild West, even till this day. You have a few new homes in Austin that are $500,000 homes on the mountain, and while wow, somebody lives in a home with a bunch of broken windows. It's like, wow. Here's a Mason, and he's not buried in the Masonic Cemetery across the road. How about that? Just proves my point. 
Some of the Masons preferred to be buried in the Catholic cemetery, but you better believe that they had their fraternal symbol on their grave marker. Almost every Mason did. It's the way of the Mason. Which really, I believe, stems off the Knights and the Templar. If you look at some of the graves, there's a Templar cross. So how can you say there's no connection? There's got to be one. And I don't think they're a bad fraternal organization. I think that they're, they seek to protect and show off their masonry work. And it lasts for decades. Like in this situation, they designed these tombstones and they made good money doing it, doing the inscriptions. That's just awesome. English. True Cemetery of the Wild West. It's a much more middle class and it seems like the graves at the other end of the cemetery, the monuments that are 15 feet high, were probably the mine owners or at least very wealthy Catholics that came to Austin seeking Some of them went bust and others made it big time. And they moved up to Virginia City to work those mines and state claims. Hey, look at this piece of quartz, crystal rock. I mean, it's just it's so funny. I realize you get bits and pieces of the film, but it's just getting so windy. It's like, man. Now, I could be wrong. These all could be Catholic as well. Usually, some of the tombstones that I've seen here, theological symbols, do not represent Catholicism. Then again, the citizens was more of, you know, you're lower to possibly middle class. It's Pony Express territory and Overland Station territory. Now, freight horses, a lot of wagons, a lot of stage stops. It's incredible. I do have a good appreciation cemeteries. I don't know, this may be the Native American one that we're walking into now. I could be wrong. This has got to be citizens too, huh? I mean, when you think about it, there are certain theological symbols on a lot of them graves in the middle that would represent, I mean, are not Catholic in any way. On a lot of them, those are like middle class to low class, the citizens, and the Catholic was upper class. They were the mine owners, a lot of them. And the Masons, of course, designed those big monuments and, and did the ornate work. It's just, but this, I could imagine, would be part of citizens along with this. This might be the Native American section. It ends right there. This is probably the Native American and then this this here from here on to the big tall stones is probably all or where you were standing is ca not Catholic but citizens and then Catholics from that point where the Irish people are and on. Just based on all the epitaphs I've been reading, you know. This would be Native American. No. It's supposed to be on the west the very end. Look how it kind of, how the graves kind of just stop right here and then all of a sudden there's a bunch of smaller tombstones, unless it's down there. Well, maybe down there there's some graves. The Native American cemetery is fairly small. Yeah, look at this. Look. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's a good pick, actually. This must be still... Maybe this is the Citizen Cemetery. But like I say, some of the graves, Mammy James, this is this has got to be Native American. Mabel Potts. I don't know, but... Well, no, there it is back there. See alone? Yeah, I thought that was in the middle of the Citizen's. Maybe just not as well-to-do Catholics. You know what this is? This is the newer cemetery that was erected 
for the citizens of Austin today. That's why you call it the citizens, I believe. I could be wrong. It's very colorful. That's all Catholic. From this tree and on is all Catholic. It starts off with people who are not upper class, but maybe middle class. And then there is some of the people involved with the church who had very, very beautiful graves and wrought iron as opposed to less enclosures in the center of the cemetery. Wow. It's amazing how some of these cemeteries are not even labeled. It really is. I'm not going to overdo it with this cemetery. Like I said, it's fairly new. I'll do some EVP work. These mounds are a little creepy, but it's common in the Wild West. If you go out to their centers like Pahrump, you'll see hundreds of these mounds everywhere in some of the cemeteries. Or Beatty, Nevada, or Beatty, as some people call it. This looks exactly like the cemetery in Beatty. A lot of burial mounds, a lot of stones dating back to the mid-1950s. And it is what it is. Here's one 2006. These are newer epitaphs and intermits, and I really don't do a lot of new cemeteries. Although I do give the respect every gravesite deserves. This is one of these things that the Native American cemeteries in the back, I can actually see some graves in the woods or the tree line. So we'll check those out. But wow, it's still nice. It's very colorful. Something happened here. Whoa, you can tell the winds blew that one over. The wood fell right over it. These kind of cemeteries need attention constantly, and the problem is, don't get it unfortunately Tayabi Peak which almost is in elevation these mountains nearly go for 100 miles and they are woodsy and there are many lush canyons and creeks and rivers and anything paranormal could be up there the Shoshone lived here for a thousand years there's petroglyphs in those mountains and ancient sites like you would not believe maybe even some UFO hot zones Appears we're still in the Citizens Cemetery, Dan Brown. I'd like to find the Shoshone Cemetery. I'm afraid that the Native American Cemetery may have a bunch of unmarked burials, unfortunately. This is Shoshone country. Beautiful country in Nevada. There was a lot of discrimination and mistreatment of the Shoshone. Is that it over here? I don't see no graves, man. It's supposed to be on the west end. Little angels. Wow. It's very woodsy. There is no Native American graves. But you can see I'm making the effort to given up. Supposedly this is an Indian burial ground on the west end of the citizens. Right here. And there's no graves. Then again, it's not uncommon. A lot of Shoshone don't mark their grave sites or burial mounds. They don't want them desecrated. They wanted them to be at peace. It's the type of forest you're going to get at the bottom of the Tayabi mountain range. No, nah, dude, this is to the road. There's no graves here. It's borders the road, see? Yeah. That's a shame. If you've seen a couple burial mounds, I'd say, yeah, but it's supposed to be back here, and it's not. Is there a grave there? No. No. And this is it. Or is it just further west? I went pretty far into the thick. Did not see them. They're all side by side, supposedly. 
We don't know how true what's are. Some people don't understand their history. What's what? We do. It's part of the 